Today, I'm gonna to go over bank feeds in QuickBooks Online, so I'm gonna tell you what they are and how to use them. My name is Morgan from finepoints.biz and I love helping you guys get organized and talking to bookkeepers about their business. Definitely hit the red subscribe button down below to get a new video from me every single week. And let me know in the comments what types of videos you're interested in. Would you like more tutorials kind of like this or things about running your business or get to know me videos? Let me know. All right, so bank feeds are really kind of like the basis of what you're doing in QuickBooks Online as a bookkeeper. So first I'm gonna give kind of an overview of what they are and then I'm going to go into my QuickBooks Online and share my screen with you guys and so you can see the actual process of how to use them. I do get a lot of questions about the topic. So basically bank feeds is just hooking your QuickBooks Online account up to your client's bank account. So say they have Bank of America. You're going to log into QuickBooks Online and then find Bank of America in there, put in their login credentials, and then every single transaction that hits their bank account, either their checkings or savings, is going to feed into QuickBooks Online. Then you as a bookkeeper are in there, and so you see all these transactions. So you see stuff from Target, from vendors, you see income, you see all these different expenses, and it's your job to categorize those into different categories. So that's really how all the information gets into QuickBooks. Um, you know, in the, in the past, bookkeepers would probably be entering all this stuff based on like paper documents and stuff, but now we have bank feeds, which is totally awesome. <laughs> So the first question I get a lot is how do I know where to categorize things? So after a while, after a while working for my, for my client, a couple months, I get to know their expenses and what they're spending money on. So I know every time it's, you know, the city of whatever, it's their water bill. Every time they go to the certain restaurant, it was a meal with a client, etc. And of course there are things where they could buy multiple categories. So like Amazon, for example. So your client could be buying office supplies or they could be buying office furniture. Um, there's probably other things they could buy on Amazon as well, maybe um, books that would be like education. So you need to work out a system with your client on how you will um, figure out what they're spending their money on. So maybe they only buy office supplies on Amazon and you know every time you see Amazon that you're gonna put in office supplies and then maybe the three times a year they buy like a big desk or something and they want, you want it to go in office furniture, they are going to let you know. Maybe they'll email you that invoice. Another option is you could be granted access to their Amazon account or they could be forwarding you invoices either into QuickBooks or to a different third party account that you guys have worked out. And then inevitably, there's always a small handful of things that I don't know each month, depending on the client, one to six maybe. And so in that case, I put all those things together in one account. I personally use the Ask My Accountant account. It's one that comes automatically in QuickBooks um, every time you set up a new client. Um, you could also name it something else. You could name it like questions for the owner or whatever you want. But I just use that one because it's already in there, ready to go. And so at the end of the month, I just send them a report of all those ask my accountant things and say, what did you spend money on at Target on September 12th? Sometimes your client will also want income categorized in certain buckets in certain ways, depending on if they're getting income from different places. Again, you need to work with your client specifically to see what their needs are. Maybe um, there is a different program they use to invoice, and so you are able to log in there and see where their, you know, where their money is coming from. Maybe you're already invoicing in QuickBooks and you can just categorize things within the invoices. But basically all these things are gonna be feeding in with these bank feeds and then your job is to communicate with your client or to know their business well enough to categorize them. And I have a couple other videos. I'll link those below. I have one on the chart of accounts if you don't know what that is. And then one called the paperless bookkeeper where I talk about how I don't collect any papers from my clients. I expect them to keep paper records if needed or give me things digitally. When you're categorizing, you can also set up rules in QuickBooks. So it knows every time you have a certain vendor or certain keywords that it goes in this category. So that is a big time saver. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to my computer screen and I'm gonna record a little tutorial for you of the bank feeds and exactly what that looks like. All right, and just a reminder of how to get to the sample company. If you want to just go to this gear icon and then go to, down to sample company, it'll ask you if you want to open it and say continue. And then you can um, use this to kind of play around in QuickBooks without actually having to mess up one of your client's actual books or your own actual books. So um, this is all about a fake, you know, company called Craig's Lands Design and Landscape Services. So today we're talking about bank feeds. So to get to bank feeds, you just go on this menu over here to banking. And then you can also see there's the receipts 
tab that I was talking about earlier in the video as well. And then you can see here, this has already been hooked up to this person's bank account. You can see their checking savings and their credit card, their MasterCard here. If this was the first time you were logging in, it would prompt you to um, hook up to a bank account. And you could also click this button, which is link um, account and then find, you know, go find your actual bank account. So here you can see in the checking account, there's 25 items waiting for me to categorize. So, and there's tabs here. These are waiting for me and then things I've already done and things I chose not to put into the so the main thing we're just going to do is go to this, um, these 25 items and decide where they are. So let's start right here with Hicks Hardware. Open it up at the vendor fed in as well as the amount and the date are all in there. So we just have to categorize it. I'm going to say that is a job material because they had to buy something for their decks and patties. So again, these are all set up in the chart of accounts, which you can watch my other video about the chart of accounts if you need that. But um, I am going to make that a job material and then click add. And then it is added into the, so there's only 24 left. So it's added into my QuickBooks. It's, it's officially in my books now. All right, and you can see some of these green ones, uh, they already were entered in QuickBooks. So this is a check. So when this person wrote the check, um, they put it in QuickBooks because they wanted to know, wanted to, you know, make sure that they knew how much money was out in checks. So they put it in there, they put number check number 25. And then when that check was cashed, the $228 showed up in the bank account. And so QuickBooks knows that. So it matches it to what was already in there. So I'm going to just click match for that type of thing. Same with these deposits. So these were already recorded in QuickBooks. And then when they actually showed up, they were recorded as things that were going to be put in the bank. And then when the bank actually registers that, okay, yes, this deposit was put in there, then it is, it, it matches it, it finds it. So I'm going to click match for those type of things. All right. And then occasionally it'll find two things that match. And that's where you, where you kind of have to go in and use your, you know, deductive reasoning skills or ask your client what, which one is the correct one. So they spent um, the same amount on this squeaky clean car wash on two different dates. So you would just have to figure out, um, you know, it's probably this one. They paid different ways. So you'd have to figure out which one is the correct one. So I'm gonna choose this one and then match that. All right, and then here is books by Bessie. So let's try to create a rule for that. So every time, every time we get a something from this vendor books by Bessie, we want it to be an office expense. So let's create a rule for that. So I'm going to name this Bessie. And then anytime the money comes in and you're checking and it contains books by Bessie, then it's going to go into office expenses. So I can save that. And if there's any other ones from the same vendor, then they would automatically um, change and I could, I could add them as well. And you can go to this categorized area and see all of the things that I just added. And then this was the rule. And then if you do go to the bank register again, it's kind of just like what it looks like in your bank account. So you can see everything coming in and coming out that is in QuickBooks. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about bank fees or if anything I said was unclear. And don't forget to let me know what types of videos you are interested in seeing. Hit the red subscribe button down below and you guys know thumbs ups helps me out so much. So that'd be great if you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. All right. Thank you. Bye.